What is up guys, my name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I generated almost $24,000 in sales last month. I want to make this my most in-depth and helpful video yet, so let's get into it. I get there's a lot of fakes out there, so here's a video of me refreshing my Shopify dashboard. By the way, I'm not showing these sales to brag or boast. I'm just showing them for authenticity and credibility. I'm going to be sharing all the components of my success without revealing my product or my store or anything. I'm doing this to allow you to duplicate the process, but not the products. So as an important basis, I think we should talk about the store first. It's a niche based store that I built a large Instagram following with, which I think really contributes to my success. I have about 10,000 followers on Instagram and about 5,000 of those I bought when I was first starting off to get social proof and credibility. One thing I think really helps me build a large Instagram following is I only post products about once a week. In the other days, I'm just posting niche content. This helps you generate followers because no one wants to follow a page to see their products every single day. Instagram influencers are huge for me and it's allowed me to be successful with Facebook because I built a lookalike audience from the purchases that I've gotten on Instagram. I have other videos detailing this, but I truly think that it's the easiest way to go about Facebook targeting. Because I've been doing Instagram influencer shoutouts for so long, I built relationships with these influencers and I'm currently engaged in bulk pricing deals with them. This helps me get shoutouts for cheaper and it helps drive down my CPR. I'm really, really picky when it comes to my influencers. I have a spreadsheet with over 150 in this particular niche, but I only use about 15 of them. And this is all depending on the value that you get from the price. I have influencers that have 80,000 followers and I use influencers that have 3.5 million followers. It's all about what you're getting for your money. Many people ask how many products you need on your store and I would say at least 10 when you're starting out, but I have about 30. The prices range anywhere from $5 to $40 and the main product that I'm selling is on the higher end of that scale. So most of my sales during August came from one product. This had two variants, which I think is pretty important because I hate the products that have, you know, 20 choices and then the customer can't pick and they just end up leaving. I think it's really important to have low variants. Like I said, I have a niche store and it's a niche product. But one thing I think is really important is that the product is specific enough to easily target, but broad enough to have a sufficient market. This makes it so that you can find your targeting without having to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars, but then you also have enough people to sell to that you can basically cash out on the product. So I discovered this product actually by seeing influencers in my niche using this. I saw a couple YouTube videos and a few people on Instagram as well, and I really didn't see many people selling it. But when I actually looked into it, I found that the competitor was running ads for it. That made me really start selling the product. I attribute finding this product to really just keeping up with niche accounts, not only on Instagram, but also on other channels. I think that this is essential, no matter what niche you're in or what kind of business or whatever, you have to follow the market. That's something that I'm always going to preach and it definitely contributed to my $24,000 month. When testing the product, I'm always doing 100% influencer ads because I feel like there's a higher chance of something hitting on there. I'm using pages that are kind of smaller, anywhere from 80,000 to around 400,000 followers. Keep in mind that these are pages that I've already used before, so testing the page to see if it works isn't really part of this. Every day I would run a different ad and each day I would use two to three different pages. After I've tested about three or four ads and found the one that converts the best, I would start scaling. Scaling on Instagram is pretty easy and honestly the thing that really holds you back is the time. It takes time to contact all of these influencers and get posts set up and pay them and all this and that's why many people prefer Facebook. When you are scaling on Instagram, all you really have to do is move to larger pages and my strategy was to stack like 7 to 10, maybe even 15 winning influencers every Saturday 
and post at 7 p.m. Eastern time. This makes it so the product isn't super saturated if you're just running ads once a week. You don't have a bunch of competition, but it also allows you time during the week to test different pages that you haven't used before. I would also use these weekday posts to test different ads. Now comes the time where I take the product to Facebook. Basically, I would just completely copy the winning ad and run it with a 1% lookalike audience. I start with four ad sets, each on an $8 a day budget. These four ad sets would be US and Canada for 18 to 24 year olds, US and Canada for 25 to 32 year olds, Australia and New Zealand for 18 to 24 year olds, and Australia and New Zealand for 25 to 32 year olds. The reason why I'm doing this is the US and Canada and Australia and New Zealand are basically the main four countries I sell to. So I wanna test the ages and see what's working best. However, I already knew the gender that was going to work best for this product. And I didn't really think I needed to test that. Normally I would. One thing I think is really important is I didn't scale too quickly on Facebook. I waited around five days before increasing the budget of winning ad sets. And even then, I would only increase it by a maximum of 15% per day. I launched three to five ad sets per week, even more when I was first starting the product. And I would test different variables like device, ad, ad copy, and others. When it comes to retargeting, I don't think I'm doing enough as I should, but I do have audiences for those who viewed the product on my website but they didn't end up purchasing it and I also have audiences for those who have watched 95% of my ad video but they haven't ended up purchasing. The reason why I have these two audiences is I think it really shows the people that are most interested in the product and the people that may end up buying it if you just poke at them a little bit more. One thing I think is really important is upselling people, not only when they're on your website to originally purchase the product, but after they've purchased the product, try to find something that even slightly goes with it, and then just send them an email or another type of retargeting ad to upsell them. One thing that's really important with retargeting and everything else is just testing. With retargeting, you want to test a 10% discount, a 15% discount, free shipping, and then put something in your ad copy that says like low stock or running out or whatever, just add that scarcity factor. That's really going to help you recover some lost sales. With email marketing, I'm really not doing much at all and I know that I can make at least an extra couple thousand dollars a month if I focus on it. Right now I'm doing abandoned cart emails which are really easy, they're all automated, and basically that's where if someone puts in all their information but doesn't end up checking out, it'll email them three times and give them a discount code and a whole bunch of other stuff. It works like probably not even 5% of the time, but it's free sales. I also do a monthly niche email. This is just to remind people that I'm still there. I kind of offer them like a 15% discount code, I think and then just kind of talk about stuff that's going on in the niche right now. About two weeks after that, I'll do a monthly sale email, which is just announcing this big whole great sale and all these products are on sale and you can also take an extra 20% off by using this coupon code. And that's really to just get people back on your site. Those both generate me a couple hundred dollars in sales every time I send them out. I was able to generate $24,000 in one month by following the steps that I've just gone over. I realize that everybody does it different and some people may have better strategies to capitalize on winning products. For that reason, I'm always going to be testing and tweaking the steps that I take in order to take the biggest piece of the pie possible. Whether that means private labeling or a more aggressive advertising strategy or whatever, it's always worth testing. I've only been drop shipping for a year now, but I firmly believe that these are the steps that you should take to generate five figures a month pretty easily with Shopify drop shipping. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I tried to switch it up for this video, so if you took some value out of it, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one.